Why would you um, walk out? <laughs> Y'all, and I'm wearing this Your shirt. Your whole head is cut out. Wait a minute. <laughs> he just drove off, and I know y'all saw that. Two hours from Two hours. Good morning, guys. If you are new to our channel or you're coming back to our channel, today we are not in our house, as you can tell. We're currently on vacation, and we thought it would be fun to just bring you guys along on a day in our life. So the time right now is 10, 11, 10, 11. We let ourselves sleep in a little bit. We're on a staycation. <laughs> oh yeah. I should have like gotten into that a little bit. So we're still in Houston. We're just about like 40 minutes away from where we live and it's like a nicer area and we decided to just come stay at like a nice hotel for the weekend and have a staycation. I think it's really important to take care of our like mental health and our physical health and Trey and I were both like, I mean, I think that I think the last vacation that we had taken was June. So it had been a little bit of a time a time since we took our last vacation and we were like, let's go somewhere, let's plan something. But right now there's just like a lot going on in our like lives where we can't just like get up and be like let's get on a plane and go somewhere so this was the in between the in between <laughs> where's why does that sound like something i think that might be like a a show or a movie what's it called on um stranger things the upside down oh. <laughs> oh i thought we were in the upside down oh my gosh all my hair is like breaking and because you take so long to get ready. Y'all, it'll take me maybe like 10 minutes Wait, to get ready. So I try to time it based off of like what all she has to do. So I'll probably get up and start getting dressed here in a minute. We're about to go to a cool little breakfast spot, Sahara Found, and it's in walking distance. That's what I like. When we go on vacations, we try to stay away from like vehicles and transportation if we can. And that's my favorite part about it. Like right now, um, we were in the Tesla, what time? The last time we were in it was around like two yesterday. Yeah. So it's going on 24 hours that we haven't gotten in a vehicle. It reminds us just of like DC life. So that's yeah. my, honestly my favorite part about being on vacation. We've just been walking everywhere. Yesterday we walked to the mall, which you guys, like you'll see some of the uh, footage. <laughs> we went to Barnes and Noble, walked around like a water area, and just relaxed. So. <laughs> Today we're gonna walk and get some breakfast. It's like a three minute walk or something. What else do we have? Mm -hmm. We're definitely gonna watch the Astros game later. Like that's our big thing. It's World Series game six today, right? So if anybody watches baseball or doesn't watch baseball, the Astros, which is our Houston team, is in the World Series for the fourth time in six years, which is awesome. And today, if we win this game, we win the World Series. That's what I'm looking forward to. Me too. Oh, you should tell them about the little bracelet you bought at the mall the other day. Or last night. Oh yeah, we went to um, Hallmark. We like that store because we usually go for like Star Wars ornaments. They have really cool Star Wars stuff. And we found this little thing. I don't know if y'all can see it. And I don't really feel like getting up. <laughs> but it's, um. there's a little shark on there. And it's like those lava beans that you can put essential oils in, which I love. I'm always wearing them. Like, I wore this one here. It has a tiny little heart. And that just reminds me of a little baby's heart. Aww. Oh, it's got a little baby heart. Oh, that's sweet. So, anyways, I got this one. And it's super cool. Not just because of, like, the shark stone. But it actually, each bracelet comes with one of these. Um, it's not going to focus. It's not going to focus. But anyways, you open it up and there's a picture. And they actually track a bunch of different sharks. 
and they put a tracker inside them and you can scan the QR code and it has like a profile and my shark's name is Finn and there's a picture of Finn in here. And when you scan the little QR code, um, there's like a GPS system and you can actually track your shark and where they are in the ocean. It's really cool. So my shark has been hanging out in Florida. Um, they started on the coast near, what was it, Miami-ish? I think it was Miami. And now he's just been hanging out for the last four months in Orlando. I guess he wants to go to Disney like us. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, it's pretty cool. And then it just, the money goes towards a good cause. So I thought that was pretty cool. It's called Saving the Blue and the company's called Follow. F-A-H-L-O. Follow. <laughs> so yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, if you buy one of these, and it's not just sharks, it tracks an animal. So there was actually like ones where the stone was, an elephant, um, a lion, a turtle. A penguin. Yeah, so it's just super cool. It goes towards a really good cause, pretty cheap. Um, I can remember how much it was, like 12 bucks or something. But yeah, it's pretty cool. So if you guys see me wearing the bracelet with the shark, you know the reason. <laughs> and if you see me wearing the bracelet with the little heart, you know the reason, because it's a little baby's heart. Where's my deodorant? Um, in here. Thanks. Being a wife, you gotta carry everything. Five months until I can actually use my dad jokes. I keep telling him I'm gonna get him New Balance shoes because those are the ultimate dad shoes. Oh, have you checked your Tesla? No. So the Starting. cool thing about having a Tesla is like when you leave it parked somewhere, you can always know where the location of it is, like if it's being moved around or anything. And then like when people walk by, it'll take a photo of them or it'll start recording. So whenever we're somewhere new, like we are right now, like it's parked in a garage and we just have like a feeling like, I hope the car's okay. Instead of having to walk to go check it, you can just play back the videos from your phone and stuff. Or to add a new feature, where you can view the live camera, which I'm about to check. And you can actually say stuff like, again, this isn't gonna focus. Oh, and it's also dark. That was just bad, that was bad. <laughs> Let me try this. Anyways, I'll just tell you, there's like a microphone um, feature now where like if you see someone standing by your car or sitting on your car or whatever, you can like say something and it says it to them, like out of the uh, exterior speakers. And it turns it, you can like change the voices because Elon Musk is such a like sci-fi nut. You can turn it into like a demon voice. <laughs> you can do like a Darth Vader voice. So if you're like, please get away from my car, it'll say it in a different voice. That's just funny to me. That is pretty funny. But anyways, it's looking good on the live cam. No one around us. And that's it. You can honk it. You can flash it. That's why I love my Tesla. There's a lot of cool features. That's why we love the Tesla. We should just, Tesla, give us the brand deal. <laughs> Y'all, we did a staycation and my dad and stepmom are on their way to Jamaica for like eight days. Living, living their best life. <laughs> I kind of want to talk a little bit more about our staycation. So like we, I won't say that we live like a very frugal life, but at the same time, we don't live like a very extravagant, crazy life. We like the idea of like, if you have money and you can afford something and you're working hard, 100%, like spoil, spoil yourself, go for it, you're working hard, you earned it. Like you shouldn't take all your money to the grave. And at the same time, we don't believe that you should be like crazy, like, we're not the type to be like, I need a huge diamond ring on my hand or I need to wear the latest designer clothes and things like that. But we always do our research and like make sure that we can get the best deal possible. And like with a Tesla, yes, it was like a cost, like you guys know how much Tesla's cost and stuff. But at the time we were like, this is a great decision because you save money on gas and it's better for the environment and stuff like that. And the same thing goes for like the staycation. As a lot of you guys know that um, we were on a three month 
work trip where we were living in hotels but at the same time we had signed up for rewards points at hotels so this entire weekend technically is like a free staycation because we're not paying for the actual days in the hotel we're using our points and then we don't have to pay for gas for our tesla and we actually don't have to pay for electricity in our garage where we currently live so when we charge the tesla it's completely free to us yep so that's how we live and that's how we vacation <laughs> pretty cool Maybe that's the like brown in both of us <laughs> looking for the good deals. Well, I grew up on like opposite. Well, I don't know. I've had like three experiences actually in life when it comes to finances. So like some of you guys, you may see my dad's life right now and like he's wealthy, but actually I didn't experience that growing up at all. He didn't come into his wealth until after I graduated high school. So like, but he was more middle class. So when my parents got divorced, I was young. I was like 10 or something like that. I don't know, somewhere around there. And um, my mom has always definitely been like lower class because you know, she was like a single mom for a long time trying to provide and just work and be able to pay rent. Even though my dad was paying his half with uh, child support. Um, so with her, it was just hard. It was like true, not complete poverty, but it was a very hard struggle. Like we didn't have money to eat sometimes and get meals and fill the car with gas and stuff like that. Like we were lucky enough to always have a roof over our head and blessed enough for that. But other than that, it was no type of like, you know, luxurious things or just, really anything that wasn't a need. And then my dad, while he was divorced, he was more middle class because him and my stepmom, like they had full-time jobs and made decent money. But my stepmom had three kids already. So it was three kids and then my dad's two kids. They were pro providing for five kids. So there was really no luxury there because it's just like, they didn't have super good careers. They were more just getting by, doing their thing, building their lives, because they're still relatively young. So, yeah, my dad didn't, like, start his business and get it to where it is until after high school. Like, so it was weird. I didn't get to experience that as a kid. Like, oh, the spoiled kid who grew up, like, and I think it benefited me, to be honest. Like, yeah. my dad came into his money after he was providing for me. So, I don't know. It was, it's been a good experience because I've gotten to see what it's like to like really struggle. And now I've seen what it's like to like live very uh, financially just secure. And I think, I mean, me and Zahar are in a better place than my parents ever were when I was living with them already. So it's kind of like crazy to think about because my story is similar, but not as extreme as Trey's <laughs> where my dad came to this country and put himself through college, paid for his college, worked at gas stations and like three jobs at a time if he needed to. And then he got married to my mom and you know, the way that they kind of made it in this country was the support of their family and living together for a lot of years, like with his siblings and you know, my mom getting on her feet early as soon as she could learn to speak English and getting a job. I think her first paycheck was anywhere from like $3 an hour to like $5 and the reason she got the job was it was a daycare and she was like oh my kids can go to the daycare for free it was a Montessori school so if she was a teacher there they could go there for free so like just seeing them work so hard and I even talked to my dad recently because we have a kid on the way and he's like just remember that like when I was in your position and I had two children and I was still in school I like I think his total income was like 30,000 and he's like I supported a family off of $30,000 like as long as you're working hard, you're being smart about the way you spend your money, you save your money, like you can make it. And you don't have to have like a big, crazy, lavish lifestyle or a job to like live that dream life that you want someday. You just got to know the value of hard work and money. Mm -hmm. so we like to like remind ourselves and think about our past often. And like we even now say like, like Trey said, we are a little bit better off than like where our parents were at our age. And that we constantly remind ourselves like when our kids are old enough, when they're 16, 17, 18, whatever, we're gonna be like, hey, get a job. Like 
you don't have to use your money, but we want you to know what it feels like to work hard for money and start saving it now. And the fact that we both got on our feet early in life, like 17 years old, working our first jobs, we learned the value of money and saving, mm -hmm. which is really important. Yep. <clears throat> but anyways, guys. That was a deep conversation. <laughs> yeah, it was. I'm starving. How much longer? Not very. It's just I can't keep talking to the camera. <laughs> Right now, I'm responding to our amazing chat group. Like, it's not gonna focus, but <laughs> interracial love family chat. Um, I'm just sending a text to all of our students right now, letting them know what we're up to, and answering some of their questions about their relationships. That's what we do in the interracial love family chat. People just basically send us uh, messages about their like relationship or situation. And we just have back and forth with our group. It's pretty cool. Yeah, like what they're going through currently. Um, and then like if anyone has questions about the actual program, stuff like that. Yeah. So this morning I woke up at 730 and I guess it's just like a new environment and like not really, really being able to sleep in and also like pregnancy, not being able to find a comfortable spot. And I just started responding to my Instagram DMs, which guys i've literally like gotten through maybe 200 or almost 300 this week which i'm killing it like i'm gonna give myself that but this morning i was as soon as trey woke up i was like did you know that i've gotten through like 35 dms today <laughs> so even on vacation we do our best to help you guys okay i'm done <laughs> all right these are my jammies I just finished doing my makeup and I'm gonna change. <coughs> it's still recording your call. Sometimes y'all, the guy gets to be dramatic in the relationship. Y'all don't see that behind the scenes. Are you admitting that it's you, you're the problem? No, I'm admitting that once every 30 days, I get to have a, be the dramatic side of the relationship. Oh! I'm just Are you ready already? Almost. Oh, you so long. What the heck? Let me use the How does this thing gonna die in like one minute? It was in sleep mode. Oh my god. You sound getting loud. Oh my god. What's sleep mode for if it's just gonna die in like 12 hours? Bye. Yeah. He was home. Well, are we walking like super far? No, it's just a two minute walk. So I can wear my Crocs? Yeah. Just wear them with socks. You're wearing yours without socks? Yeah, because I don't have socks. So you're saying that you wear with socks? I personally would wear Crocs with socks, yes. I don't okay. like wearing Crocs Stop. with socks. I'm going to do my outfit change. Why would you um, walk out? <laughs> what do you mean? You said stop. Yes, yeah, stop moving. Okay, I'm changed. This was the shirt that I wore and almost basically the same outfit I wore the last World Series game and we won. And I'm being a little superstitious, so I gotta put it on. And here's the bump check. It's a little small <laughs> because I'm hungry. <laughs> Y'all, and I'm wearing this Your shirt. Your whole head is cut out. When I'm wearing this Astro shirt, like, Seven games, no, probably like four games in a row. And it hasn't been washed, so step away from me. Yeah, it's not that bad. <laughs> oh, hi, baby. Oh. We're going to win a World Series today. And you're going to get to see your first World Series win. Yeah. Little baby boy. No, little baby girl. <laughs>
Ting ting. <laughs> How long do we have to wait? That was annoying. <laughs> you can play well. video. She just drove off, and I know y'all saw that. I'm that was actually really funny. I don't know if that was on camera or not. Alright guys, we're going to do a swan boat ride. Even though there's a duck on it, we're doing a swan. <laughs> I'll probably do most paddling. That's true. Okay. Anything else you want to say? Any last wishes? <laughs> no. I hope that it can work. We saw a couple that was stuck on the wall for like 20 minutes. Yeah, so this is the area for the swan boat. You guys can see them. There was a couple that like couldn't get off the wall for a minute. Getting ready for this extreme adventure. <laughs> safety first. Is this like a safety demonstration video? Mm -hmm. Look how cute the swan is. I don't think I've ever done this. Trey said he has done this before. I've done it once. I don't know if it was a swan. I think it is a regular paddle board. Oh. Or a paddle boat. Gotta buckle the belly up. She, you just make them big, yeah. Don't like squeeze it too tight. You can loosen it. I'm not. It does kind of need to be tight still. Y'all, we're about to see if we can figure these babies out. Ready? Yeah. We're on the swan ride. Look at him pedaling. Oh my god! Turn it up. Turn it up. 